Whoa! Hello there! Welcome to the, uh, to an offline video today. How's everyone doing? I, uh, completely forgot how to do these. I used to do them a lot. Well, not really a lot, a lot. But I've been doing them on live streams. Mainly on the, uh, a cheeky plug. On, uh, Twitch. And, uh, here right on, uh, the red platform. And also on the green platform. But, uh, why I'm doing this video, I kind of want to do like a, uh, a look into DSP's most popular review on KO Gaming. Because, yeah, we're going to be looking at that, um, with the first ever collab with Guy With Two Names. That'll be, uh, in the future. This will definitely be uploaded way before it, so... Be sure to look out for that and all that. So I guess without further ado, I guess we'll uh <laughs> I guess we'll jump into whatever the fuck the guy has cooking up for AO Gaming. Alright, Sanagar, you can go away for now. Alright, so first things first. I was not there for the initial, like, start of KO Gaming. Oh, yeah, I move my arms. I wasn't there for the official start of KO Gaming. I just want to know, why the fuck would he drop this? Like, this is like a whole edited thing that he had, and he just abandoned it for no fucking reason at all. And then just out of nowhere, we get random Black Ops gameplay. We get whatever the fuck... South Park, a random South Park, and Eternal Darkness. I have no idea what the fuck that game is. And then we just jump to random games and all of this. Then we get an emergency vlog, because uh, DSP, you know him for all of his emergencies. And oh, he has a lot of them. Random Twitch stuff and an Overwatch tips tutorial. <laughs> now I uh, shout out to Piece of Peace. I know about this. But he tried to give tips and he didn't really know what the fuck he was doing. But uh yeah, all of this is uh it has to be a deep dive for another day. Cause I wanna look at this one. This fucking review that he basically put out and uh just went on vacation after it. Cause what do we get? We get a million fucking views here. And this was the one way we went on a staycation. So that's uh that's nice. So I wanna see his review style through Hey look, you got chapters. At least he was learning. Trying Epic Mickey. The fuck was he Why is Epic Mickey here? Can't wait, what? This is already an odd review. Well you know what, without further ado, let me see what the fuck. <laughs> His most popular negative video was. Because, yeah. Negative videos are the only thing that was popular. So, uh, I guess he stopped doing reviews because everything was too negative. Let's fucking go. Ladies and gentlemen, my name oh my is Darkside Phil. I've been you didn't on YouTube know. for the greater part of eight years, covering pretty much every major release. Alright, and right off the bat, I hate the way he fucking starts this shit. Like, hello, I'm Darkside Phil. If you didn't know... Uh, Dark Side Phil of KO Gaming. Yeah, so cool. ...that I could, ranging from console games that are huge AAA releases... I feel like this is gonna be all over the place. The for sound wise. release here and there. Hell, even some handheld hell. games. And in all the time that I've made videos... Alright, what happened? Over 50,000 <laughs> videos for YouTube. DSP, that's not a good thing that you have 50,000 fucking videos. I hate the way he brags about having 50,000 fucking followers or uh, videos. Like, what the fuck? You shouldn't strive to have that many fucking videos on some shitty ass YouTube channel. I don't know, DSP. That, that doesn't seem like that would be something to brag about. Just letting you know. Today, unfortunately, is the very first day that I have to tell you I have played the worst game I have ever played in my life. Starting with the exaggeration. I just want to let you know, I don't take that statement lightly. 
I really pride myself on giving you honest feedback, commentary, and reviews. Of course, the same fucking stick that he always does. I give you my honest feedback because no one else on the internet gives you honest feedback. Says the fucking beggar. I don't know. I'd go anywhere else to get more like authentic feed. I hate that I'm using authentic. Real feedback from an actual person because this dude's a fucking alien. Regarding the games that I play on YouTube, because I like to think that my videos are a service to people who are going to watch them, see if they like the game that I'm playing, and then go out and buy it for themselves, or subsequently skip the game if it's something that's not their cup of tea. Yeah, because if DSP hates something, that means the game must be bad. Today we're going to be talking about Homefront The Revolution. A game that was stuck in development hell for five years, a game that was supposed to be the sequel to a 2011 release for a game studio that no longer exists. <sighs> Let's get started. And what was that fucking weird sigh for that? You could tell, like, all of his videos were just, like, fake. It seemed like he had this all scripted out. Me? I'm going in this without a fucking script, so everything you see is gonna be authentic takes. And I hate the... I hate that I'm using that word, but dude, even he, uh, it seemed like he wrote the fucking side down too. Like if he didn't write that down, he probably wouldn't have signed. He probably felt like that was a crucial point. Way back in 2011, a little game called Homefront was released. Now, admittedly, this game was not even a blip on many people's radar. Already from the start, a lot of people's reviews. Well, the ones I've seen, I never seen fucking people go over like the full history of stuff. Even I'm gonna even say this, Angry Joe. Angry Joe even makes his reviews like more interactive with skits and stuff. Something that I don't know have entertainment value. It's just DSP. DSP just talking over stuff. And sometimes the gameplay doesn't even match up with what the fuck he's talking about, too. I had the chance to actually check it out and found it surprisingly different from your standard first-person shooter, at least when it came to a few aspects of the story. The story featured a what-if scenario. What if America had been purchasing technology from North Korea for years? What if America had become completely dependent upon technology from North Korea, including not just electronics, but also... As you can tell, just like what I'm doing here, it's all just one take. Well, at least with uh, my stuff. It's kind of somewhat like, I don't know. I really don't care. Well, I'm not going to say I don't care, but I'm really trying to like <laughs> make like a uh, good looking YouTube video because I haven't done it in so long. So this one might be iffy, but this dude, it just seems like he just hits record and then he just jumps straight into it. He doesn't even know what he's saying half the time. Military grades, you hear all the hiccups. helicopters, tanks and weapons. And what if North Korea and the United States had a falling out, and there was a back door into all of that technology, which would completely lower all of America's defenses, leading to an invasion of the West Coast by North Korean military forces. What a premise, and what a weird way to start a first-person shooter. I remember watching the intro cutscenes of this game and gasping at some of the really gruesome things that happened, and it really just ended up being- Even this, I can't even trust his word that he was honestly surprised by all of this. Because we already know he hates playing games. So even back then, I wouldn't even doubt it if this dude was already sick of playing games at this point. Just look at him right now. We begging. We doing nothing. We doing anything but to play the game. We got a fucking 90 minute fucking, let me see, podcast. And that's picking up the quotes very horribly. Just to not fucking play games. This dude just hates everything. Well, good reason. But this is his hell. He uh, made it for himself pretty unique now overall the gameplay of the game wasn't anything to really write home about it was kind of just run and gun fair comparable to call of duty but at least the story the gave this game a unique identity and so at that time publisher thq decided that they wanted to make a sequel unfortunately thq ended up declaring bankruptcy and subsequently going out of business <laughs> declaring bankruptcy oh don't worry he was foreshadowing this it felt like he was foreshadowing what he was going to do in the future no fucking way. Well, look, I guess he has something in common with the developers. They're both bankrupt. Batman. Only one of them I feel sorry for. 
is selling off all of its game franchises to the highest bidder. Homefront ended up being bought by Crytek, the same company that made Crisis, and then subsequently fell to a game developer named Deep Silver. Like, none of this even matters in the fucking review. Like, why do we need a history segment over the game? You're supposed to just... The first, like, five minutes of the fucking video, you're supposed to be going over, like, what the game is about. Like, what the game actually is. We don't need this long history segment. I don't care if you put chapters in it or not. But we shouldn't get this long history segment. This shouldn't exist. Like, this whole chapter shouldn't even exist. And, of course, we uh, lead in the graphics because he is a graphics whore. Who then contracted a new game studio to actually make this like that could have made this so much shorter the revolution so it's been five long years that we've been waiting for this game to come out and everyone's been wondering what is it going to be is it going to be similar is it going to be different we kept hearing rumblings from the game studio and from deep silver that the game got delayed twice first originally supposed to be released in 2015 then being pushed to early 2016 and then finally being delayed until today may 17th 2016 and finally we were able to get our hands on it <sighs> it's fucking rambling for no reason he's just pretending like he cares about this series he doesn't give a fuck about home friend i bet dude nothing about this seems authentic from like absolutely nothing the wait was not worth it there we this go this game is one of the most uninspired tired repetitive boring Unfun. Look at how he's playing the game, just shaking the camera. He was going into this wanting to be negative. Just because he saw a bunch of other people being negative on it. I'm not saying the game was good. It's probably like an average game. Because I think I remember playing it, but uh, it wasn't that memorable. But it was like an average game, but he's just hamming it up because he saw Wither, the bird app, was tearing this a whole new fucking asshole. And he wanted to join in. He wanted to get that clout. But you know what? He got the back. And he immediately dropped it when he went on vacation. Buggy. I, I, I could keep going on and on with the adjectives all day long. First of all, before I even start, I want to let you know, I played the game on PlayStation 4. And I've actually heard that the people who review... And what is this? Yeah. You have it twice here. What? You... Whatever. I mean, that's a small detail, but, you know, I'm not going to harp on that too much. New to this game, all got PC codes for it, and apparently the game doesn't have as many graphical issues as it does on the PlayStation 4. I'm just reviewing the copy that I purchased for a full $60 retail price. Okay, just... we know how much games are these, so you don't have to bring it up. So, this is, again, we already know you paid it. Oh no, I didn't get a free review copy. Well, you gotta be important enough to get those review copies. Clearly you're not important enough. Even for this. just want to make that clear up front. This is a full-fledged release that costs the price of a full game. From the get-go, you can tell that this game is insanely poorly optimized. A low frame rate, even in the opening cutscenes, choppiness. And you have to ask yourself, did anyone actually test this game on consoles and say that it was passable? Because even a, a basic game tester who's playing this game and running through... I honestly hate his tone when it comes to this whole thing. Like, if I start, if I was just coming out of this from just the outside, like, you with things, I would already hate this dude, because he sounds very, like, pessimistic. He just sounds like he's just doing this just to put it out there. It just, he just sounds so whiny in this. I don't know why. He just rubs me the wrong way. This is honestly why he can't grow. The city and trying to do action sequences could tell you a sub 20 frames per second game is not going to fly in 2016, especially with such awesome recent releases like Uncharted 4 and Doom, both running at a full. Already comparing this. I, why, I get why we're comparing it, but. It, you're comparing this with a third-person shooter, too. I I can kind of get the first-person shooter, but why are you comparing it to this one? You're just picking, like, two, like, high-profile games. This right here is just a double-A release. Judge it based on the double-A release, not a triple-A release. But I don't know. I'm just thinking of it like that. Like, there's no point to even bring up the comparisons. Just talk about the game as it is. And as it is, when it came out, the game was pretty subpar. 
full 60 frames per second, I just don't insanely like the detailed 1080p visuals. How on earth you think you could sell a game like this on the same exact console as those high-performing games and let it fly? I have no fucking clue. It's an atrocity, a ripoff, and the only thing I can tell you is that the game developers were lazy as fucking shit. And he's so quick to call other people lazy and uninspired and putting out the same stuff. But you go to his streams and you call him lazy for just sitting around talking. You get banned. He mocks. No, you get banned. And then he goes on and mock you after you uh, can't do anything to type back. Or you can't do anything at all. Yeah. You can do it. DSP can say whatever the fuck he wants. But you can't do the same to him. You know what? That's fair. In his world, that's fair. But it's not just the frame rate that's the problem with Homefront the Revolution. Just walking into the very first area of the game, you can immediately see the Wait a minute, there you go, that's Cat. And as he's uh, clicking on the flashlight, being showing that he has no fucking attention span. He just wants to see something like shiny pop up. He's like a fucking baby when it comes to this. But yeah, big ups to Cat. Laziness of this game dev team. I immediately noticed two identical NPCs standing right the fuck next to each other. This was the same thing he had for fucking Cyberpunk. Who gives a fuck? I can understand. You know what? I'm not going to say who gives a fuck about that because I can honestly see if you have two identical people, but it's not that big of a deal. He goes into these games looking for the tiniest thing and he just harps on that for a full, for the longest fucking time. Because his commentary is subpar at best. Unless the game fucking glitches out, this dude literally has nothing. He literally has nothing to show or say. The game has to literally break for him to have any insightful commentary. It's absurd. That's why he tries to break every game. He's just not good at his job. And he tries to tear down other people that are good at their jobs. Other. You couldn't even put them at opposite ends of the first area? No, let's put them right next to each other as if to laugh at the purchaser of this game and say- At least this was more like- At least this clip showed it off, at least. Most of his other clips, they don't even show off what he's actually talking about. So yeah, big ups on the two cats that's sitting there, uh, one sitting down and one standing up. Maybe that's how he found Cat. He found someone that looked just like this and he was just like, well, this is a sign. Fuck you, we've got your money, bitch. We don't care that we didn't put any attention into the fucking development. That sounds like someone I know. Fuck you, we don't care. We got your money. It was good to me. And you'll actually notice over the course of the game that most of the NPCs of those who are in the revolution, the rebel faction fighting against the North Korean invaders, are almost all the same characters repeated over and over and over it's a joke it's disgusting it's incredibly lazy that they couldn't even be bothered to calling someone a lazy. dozen characters for this game what the fuck the gameplay of homefront the revolution is similar to those kind of first person platforming action running gun shooter games of previous dude and that was just the weirdest fucking string of words this dude just likes to add words just for no fucking reason Action style, running gun style, authentic shooter, car game. Like, dude, you don't need to add all of this. Just say it's a first person shooter. That's all I was saying. Like, he wants to appear to be smarter than he actually is. Like, 90% of the time. Previous years, think Far Cry, or maybe last year's Dying Light, Sans the Zombies. And you'll probably get the- Sans the Zombies? The idea. You're in a- open world per se you'll be limited to certain areas of us open world city until you progress the story but as you climb through this world you'll be platforming around all the different city uh scaffolding yeah, and yeah. streets you're going to be trying to avoid north korean soldiers that are patrolling and will obviously identify you and shoot you on site especially the more missions that you end up doing for the resistance 
And pretty much that's the goal. Do little things throughout the city, completing story missions, completing some optional side missions, such as, oh, sabotage this, or save this random citizen on the street that's being harassed by a soldier, in order to earn money and upgrade points, so that you can get new weapons, new abilities, and new customizations for your guns. The one thing that they tried to do original in Homefront the Revolution was a gun customization system by which you can modify a weapon that you've bought. So basically the same thing that's in every other first person shooter. Customize your guns. Honestly, they're just doing everything else as uh, everyone else is doing. This isn't really that unique, but I guess for this game series, because I never really played the first one, I guess it is unique. So there you go and turn it into a completely different kind of thing depending on the situation. For example, I had a, a battle rifle, which was basically a standard assault rifle, but I modified it to actually shoot little firecracker rockets that could knock enemies down and kill them instantly. Or I also had a mod that could make it a sniper rifle, so it gives you some versatility. The problem being, the entire mechanic falls flat on its face when you realize it's almost impossible to aim and shoot anything in this game because the frame rate is so fucking choppy. But maybe because maybe that's a skill issue after time. Like he he noticed a couple frame drips dips, and he just immediately just says, "Well, the game is bad. See, I couldn't shoot him because the game is bad. The game chopped up. Like no, is that it's not gonna chop up every single fucking time. Most of these are probably just a skill issue." The time that you look down the sights, the enemies are already moving all over the screen, and you can't even get a beat on them. So I ended up having to use the rocket launcher capability of this rifle because I couldn't hit anything with anything else. In addition, it actually takes a while to switch between the weapon mods because of the clunky interface. You have to first press up on the D-pad, then hold R1, then use your left thumbstick to select which variation of the gun that you actually... This is like him explaining anything on his day off story, or anything in general. He explains everything in like such the weirdest fucking way like first i had to wake up out the bed and then i had to brush my teeth and then i had to no wait i have to get out my bed go into the bathroom get my toothbrush put the toothpaste on the toothbrush and then i have to proceed to brush my teeth and then i had to get in the shower and then i had to get this so like dude you don't have to explain things like this like he just goes on and on so fucking much he provides so much unnecessary details like we he gotta explain every single input on on the controller that he had to hit uh, then wait about five seconds while an animation completes to switch the gun so just to make this shit sound even more than it actually is it's fucking absurd any anticipation of trying to do an on-the-fly adjustment between the weapon mods the is completely worthless, and you'll be dead before you actually get between the mods themselves. It's a waste of a mechanic. It's something that could have been interesting if implemented properly. Yes, but I've seen you play games. You just need to do stuff faster. The game's not going to wait for you to do stuff. You just have to immediately know what you got to do. It's not that hard to figure out. But the one original thing that they do with the game falls flat on its fucking face. And so, ultimately with these open world first person shooter games, the question begs itself, gee, I wonder how long it's going to take until you get to repetitive fetch quests and missions that are mandatory for you to progress the game. At first, they're not, and you don't have to do them unless you're looking to get upgrade points or to get your weapons modified really quickly, but it only took, I'd say, about a little bit over an hour until I reached a critical story point where it said, well, now you need to earn 100% approval by all the people in this certain district in order to advance the story any further. Oh no, the game's forcing you to play even more. He can't just immediately rush through it and get it off the conveyor belt. Wow, what an epic gamer. I can honestly get why if there's a game that has too many like unnecessary quests in it, it can get a little tedious. But this game, a game could probably give him like five things to do. And he would say, oh my God, they're making me do too much. Like this dude seems like he'd be very easily to get pissed off because he hates playing games further which meant i had to walk around this city and repetitively Trying sabotage make it seem even worse. items i had to kill troops who were harassing uh citizens i had to unlock safe houses by simply just getting in yeah 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 we get it dsp there's a bunch of fucking fetch quests go ahead you don't have to sound like this you don't have to be a big fucking big bitch side them and pressing a button on a radio 
boring, boring, fucking boring. It's the same shit you've done in Far Cry 500 zillion fucking times. It's obvious they blatantly stole it from that formula. And, and they he makes such bold claims. Like, y'all, they blatantly stole it from Far Cry. Like, dude, there's other games that do the same things. The more games come out, they're going to come in and uh, do similar stuff. It's kind of hard now-ish to be almost 100% original. Like, it is what it is. You just enjoy it or you don't enjoy it. You didn't even need to make this review. But, you know what? Gotta get those views. Really didn't have any originality with this game. Once you unlock that 100% approval rating for that part of the district, you then get to do a few more story missions, which are incredibly annoying because the frame rate's so bad and the performance of the game is so poor on PlayStation 4 that you're gonna die a million times just trying to do basic things, like shoot the fucking enemy that's two inches in front of your goddamn face who's a fucking idiot and walks directly- You're acting like this shit's Call of Duty, and I like how he's getting fucking heated on this. This fake heated just to be like, oh yeah, guys, I fit- you feel my pain too i feel it too yeah i'm like you epic gamers you guys hate this game so do i it's the absolute fake as a fucking fakes in front of your gun but you still can't manage to fucking hit with bullets this game is a fucking piece of shit it's terrible it's not worth 60 bucks and after paying it playing it for three and a half hours i never want to fucking play it again i immediately and i like how we immediately go to the uh the leash, the leash and portion of the stream. Like, oh, I fucking hate this game. This game could suck my dick. I'm going to uninstall it right now. And we have this segment here too. Delightful. And then we immediately jump into Epic Mickey for some odd reason. Deleted it off of my PlayStation 4. Good riddance to bad fucking rubbish. So that should have been the end of the uh, review right here. We should have ended it at 10 minutes. He was long stroking for like seven extra minutes. But Phil, you might say, you've been around the block. You've been doing gameplay videos on YouTube. The for game literally is here. You've played some pretty bad stinkers before. No, DSP, I'm not thinking any of this. How does this game rank amongst the worst? Ooh, am I glad you said that because I personally... He's throwing in random shit that no one asked for. This is a review for Homefront the Revolution. Why are we throwing in other stuff? personally prepared to tell you why I think that Homefront the Revolution is the worst fucking game I've ever played. Let's talk- Just throwing in the wild of the fucking, uh, like, a wild fucking take. The worst game he ever played. How about now? What would be the worst game ever? Divinity? What else would be the worst game? Talk about some of the worst games that I've ever touched on YouTube. No one asked for this. First off, Epic Mickey. That's right, I'm going there all the way back to December of 2010. Literally, no one asked you to go there. The Wii console exclusive game release that was an action platformer with painting and erasing mechanics starring Mickey Mouse. I hated this fucking game, mostly because being on the Nintendo- This is like he felt, he saw the fucking timer on OBS and was like, oh shit, this is only 10 minutes. I gotta make this even longer. And he just threw in some random fucking games that he hated. Like, what the fuck is this? This has nothing to do with home at this point. And we, it had to implement motion control mechanics that made the platforming incredibly difficult in certain areas where if you were just able to use a standard controller to play the game, it probably would have been way easier. In addition, the limitations of the Wii's graphical engine made the game pixelated, made certain areas of the game chug along at an incredibly low frame rate, and overall the game just performed very poorly on a console that obviously couldn't handle the kind of creative vision that the game director had for the game. Ultimately, Epic Mickey was a sales success because it came out in the holiday season of 2010 and it was the only major release for kids during that period of time, so it made a ton of money. This, this is already lasting too long. So we got The Conduit, Tony Hawk, and then Conclusion. Then we finally, he finally remembered this is a fucking home for our video. However, later, when the sequel came out, people had finally really realized how bad of a game this was. The sequel completely critically flopped, no one bought it, and this series is deader than dead. Epic Mickey is a shitty game, but the game would have been functional if not for the console that it was on, the Nintendo Wii. I full-heartedly believe 
that if this game had been cross-platform or been on the Xbox 360 or PS3, it could have been a hit. It's the shame of the game developer to make it console exclusive. That's the reason that it failed, and that's why I don't think it's actually as bad as Homefront the Revolution. Well, what about Conduit 2? That's right, actually- What the fuck is Conduit 2 and why the fuck does it have any relevancy here? Because it's a game that he hated. Cool. The month after I played the original Homefront on the Xbox 360, I played Conduit 2 on the Nintendo Wii. And boy, what a contrast between those two games at the time, being that Conduit 2 tried to be ambitious. It was trying to be a Halo-esque style of alien invasion shooter where you're fighting gauntlets. Halo-esque style alien invasion shooter. What the fuck kind of sentence is that? Just say it's a fucking alien game, a first person shooter. Why do we have to add all these extra words to this? Of enemies, you're picking up unique weapons, you're using them against the enemies. It even had some unique gameplay features in it. The problem being, again, the game was a Nintendo Wii exclusive and the console could not. There we go. That's why we really hate it because it was on a Nintendo platform. And we all hate Nintendo, apparently, the DSP. He threw his Wii U in the. <laughs> the fucking trash this dude has a weird hate boner for nintendo everything nintendo instantly shot on handle what the game was trying to do creatively it was plagued by terrible graphics so you couldn't even tell what things were at a distance yet they were able to snipe you and insta kill you when all you could see was a few fucking delayed or distor uh, distorted pixels in the background of the game making enemies unhittable the frame rate chugged super low in parts and because of this it made the game almost impossibly difficult to beat of course keep in mind the ending was complete crap but Wait, what did he say impossible the frame rate chugged super low in parts, and because of this, it made the game almost impossibly- Unpossible. There you go. The game was impossible. Not impossible. Unpossible. Difficult to beat. Of course, keep in mind, the ending was complete crap, but never mind that. This game, probably again, much like Epic Mickey, would have been a better game if it had been developed on one of the more modern consoles, such as the Xbox 360 or the PS3, and it was really only the console, the Nintendo Wii, that held it back. And again, that's why I think Conduit 2 is not as bad as Homefront. Whatever. The Revolution. Last, but certainly not- And a random Tony Hawk game. This isn't even a fucking shooter. Yeah, we gotta lump this in here. In a fucking home front video. This dude, this dude can't do anything. Not even review games properly. The best out of this stinky countdown would be Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, which just released last fall of 2015. This game was a disgrace. A game developer that blatantly didn't care about what they were actually putting into their game and just wanted to capitalize on the license they had to the Tony Hawk franchise. So, so he blaming someone else but just wanted to put out something to make money. Isn't it Shawn Michaels? before they lost it at the end of the year Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 did everything possibly fucking wrong that they could do with a skating game the gameplay literally degraded to that of a Tony Hawk game from the 1990s having no story no campaign no actual selectable characters from the get-go that you would want to fucking play with or have any kind of difference between them it was basically no matter who you pick you're just going through very boring generic trials doing things such as grabbing fucking ice cream cups so like a dsp stream there you go but it had food in it so how could he hate it huh maybe it was that bad maybe dsp might be on or something i don't know i never played this fucking game fucking beach balls out of a stupid pool uh -huh. you know that's the things i think of when i think of tony hawk right no, not in 2016, especially because in the mid-2000s, we had Tony Hawk games that were far... Fucking Christ, he really long-stroking this video. More than me. ...are better and had totally progressed the series past this. This was a total regression just for the sake of selling a game for $60. But, the game ran at 60 frames per second and for the most part was fully playable there were no issues there yeah the graphics weren't the most detailed but you could play the game even though it was a shitty one you could still play it and again that's why i think it just seemed like he's mad at this game because he couldn't do any of the fucking tricks he was just bad at it this was just a whole skill issue the entire time that's basically it
I'm bad at the game, so I need to slander this as much as possible. Let me see if I can affect the sales with my small ass fucking fan base and my small ass fucking file on the internet. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 is still better than Homefront the Revolution. And that, simply put, is why I think... Oh, thank God. The last two minutes, we're finally back on the fucking concept of this video. Hit... Hit me. Uh, Homefront the Revolution. Homefront the Revolution is the worst of the worst. Epic Mickey and Conduit 2 both had some creativity to them and probably would have been pretty good games if not console exclusives on the Nintendo Wii, which could just not handle the creativity that those directors wanted to put into their games. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 is a piece of shit, but at least it's a functional piece of shit. Homefront the Revolution. Of course, we got the scat. Hey yo, it's not a DSP video with a fucking scat is neither it's got no creativity it's got no originality it blatantly steals repetitive and boring gameplay from other games and it's completely non-functional low frame rate crap on the playstation 4 this game developer damn breaker whoever the fuck they are should be ashamed of themselves D damn breaker he was so fucking wrong that he had to even put up an image of this <laughs> a professional review by the way Damn breaker, what? Damn buster. Deep Silver should be seeking to give refunds to everyone who bought this fucking game, and I can't imagine that anyone is ever going to buy a game from them ever again. To add insult to injury, I have to read this from Wikipedia, you won't believe it. Cool, Wikipedia, the most professional of sites. He probably uh, updated the thing on Wikipedia. It. In March of 2015, Deep Silver announced that- You couldn't find another place to get this info? We have to go to Wikipedia? This is like a two second search he did on his phone. Homefront the Revolution was delayed until 2016 for the reasons that they wanted to ensure their development staff would have every opportunity to turn it into a best-selling title. What the fuck? Did Damn Breaker Studios do for a fucking year because they certainly didn't. What the fuck, DSP, did you do for a fucking year or for 15 years that you basically accomplished nothing on YouTube? You just exist here. What have you been doing? We haven't been trying to make a good YouTube channel. We haven't even been trying to make like good streams. We've been begging for money. What the fuck have we been doing for 15 years? optimized the game they certainly didn't add any kind of gameplay that's fun they probably sat there with their thumbs up their motherfucking asses and spinning saying i can't wait for the money to pay off all the hard work that we isn't that ironic he's uh accusing other people of just sitting there just counting the money hmm it really makes you think huh he didn't put into this fucking garbage game this is the worst game I've ever played. Stay the fuck away from me. <sighs> well, that's it, everyone. Another fucking sigh. He's finally done with the video. And look at this. Check out the video for Amazon Associate Link. We don't have that no more. And the Patreon. Cool. The exciting Patreon where you get such amazing perks. Like, uh... Paying $20 and asking a question. Even though we do Q&A every day. Sounds good to me. I certainly hope that you liked the video, and if you did, I'd ask that you please consider giving it a like here on YouTube. Please also check out the description of the video for my... Alright, so we're basically done here. So, that was what we got from the first fucking review from this... From the most viewed one with a million. And then I'm sure it goes downhill from uh, the rest of these other ones. We got a random Dark Souls 3 DLC. Street Fighter 5, of course. Fallout 4. Yeah, we got a bunch of these. And Hitman 1 was episode, was the rest of the episodes. Hmm. But that's going to be a, uh, a deep dive for another day. We're going to dive in to see how cool the comments are on this. All right. Well, it looks like it's more active than his fucking DSP gaming shit. We really got nothing here, huh? Well... As much as I don't want to fucking look. That's basically the end of the video. So, uh, my apologies and if this is, like, super fucking rusty. I haven't done a uh, offline style video in a long time. But I appreciate everyone for uh, sticking by. 
watching uh, whatever the fuck this was. And uh, looking forward to the future if I do more of these. I be I will be in the uh, the usual places, either on YouTube or on my Twitch at a uh, Rye underscore Drake underscore three three one. Be sure to give it a follow. I greatly appreciate it. I play a variety of style of games. If you catch my drift, anything that uh, catches my eye, I usually play. And uh, get this, I actually have a VODs channel. The big up to the VODs channel. Ride Drake Twitch things and stuff where you see all of my uh all of my Seuss content from my Twitch streams, random kick streams, and uh everything else under the sun, if you will. Ignore the uh <laughs> ignore these right here. And we also have the one and only guy with two names who I will be doing a uh, cool style collab with in a few days. At the time of this video, it should be uh, the next day. And I'm I'm dating this video, but uh, if you're not already following or subbing, be sure to sub to this guy over here. He's a uh, he's a Grinch, but uh, yeah, he's a <laughs> he's a cool Grinch. He has cool twirl with him, so uh, swing by the streams and you can uh, mess with him on stream. And I'm basically done here, so I'll see you later. See you in the next one, possibly. I'll see you on the streams. Peace out. Mouth.